We're going to get started now. I'm Victoria. I'm the recruiter for the DeGroote School of Business. We're here to welcome you to our annual May at Mac event. So if we were in person, our event would be on campus and you would see our presentations and then you get to experience our club fair. And we've tried to replicate that today as much as possible. So you're going to have a presentation on our undergroup and the Business One program, and then you're going to have a presentation on the Career and Professional Development program, and then you're going to have a chance to get off Zoom and go on to a different kind of platform. It's going to let you walk around and meet current students, meet our clubs, and hopefully meet each other. So there's going to be more information on that soon. Uh, but just to go over some quick housekeeping, when you have any questions, please use the Q&A along the bottom. We're going to answer some as we go, but most of them will be answered after the formal presentation. If you don't get your, an your question answered during our presentation, you can hop onto our Zoom call afterwards or onto GatherTown and we'll be able to answer everything else for you. So now I'm gonna pass it over to the Manager of Academics, Greg, Rom Greg Rombo. Great. Thank you very much, Victoria. Um, and thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to be joined by several of our students as well as our Associate Dean uh, to talk about our program and the different opportunities um, and different attributes for the Degree School of Business and McMaster. So we do have a formal presentation. Uh, we are recording this, um, so it'll be accessible afterwards as well. And I hope to cover everything that uh, I'm expecting that you're going to ask. And then again, we'll have opportunities for questions um, after the presentation and through the day. Um, so the first question I often get is, what makes DeGroote special and uh, unique? And so when I'm asked that question, I often talk about the reputation and the quality of the institution. Uh, the community um, is available to students and the different opportunities available to students to customize their program uh, and to make a meaningful experience for themselves as they progress. So I'll start with reputation and accreditation, um, just so you can be assured that McMaster is a very high quality institution. Uh, so McMaster has again been named one of the top 100 institutions in the world, according to the Times Higher Education. Uh, we are also in the top 100 uh, for employment outcomes. Um, and then in McLean's Magazine, one of the top five schools uh, to, for student services and student satisfaction. Uh, and we're the only Canadian school that's in the top five um, for student satisfaction, as well as in the top 100 for global rankings. So it's a high quality institution um, with high satisfaction and uh, employment outcomes. We also have a great deal of accreditations. Um, primarily our AACSB is a business school accreditation um, for global business schools. Only 5% of schools around the world have this accreditation. Uh, and this is very important if you expect that your career uh, will bring you uh, into the global landscape, and I expect that it will. Um, we are also accredited by the CEPA and CHRP and uh, CFA for coursework to be completed at McMaster um, that will contribute towards your um, progression towards those designations. So for CPA and CHRP, the courses that you're doing towards your degree will count as coursework towards those designations. And for the CFA, uh, the coursework that you're doing at McMaster um, will help prepare you for those exams. So it's, it's a great opportunity for sort of killing two birds with one stone. Um, so I wanted to talk about the different opportunities within the program. Um, so we are, uh, we do offer within commerce, it's an honors commerce program. Uh, so it's not a marketing program or an accounting program necessarily. Um, so it's a very broad degree with the opportunity for you to specialize in your upper years. Um, so in four years, you have the opportunity to complete your degree. Um, there's a number of minors available um, across McMaster, and they may be in computer science, mathematics, French, or anthropology. Uh, and this is where the reputation of the entire school is quite important. And you want to know that you're attending a quality institution um, because you're taking courses uh, across the university. And you'll also be working with students from across the university within business courses. Uh, we are also a popular destination um, for our students. As I mentioned, you have the opportunity, um, if you focus your electives, um, to have those electives count towards a professional designation that you might be pursuing. Uh, so I myself, I did the MBA CPA here at McMaster. Um, and it wasn't that I had an inherent burning desire to do accounting. Uh, and I'll ask if you do. But uh, it was because those courses lined up so well that I was able to do um, both at the same time and have a count towards two different, uh, the degree and the designation. So that's a great opportunity. Um, and then uh, finally, within four years, you do have the opportunity of completing an exchange. Uh, and that might be for one term or two terms. Uh, and if you plan correctly, you might be able to stay for the summer, um, wherever that destination is as well. 
Um, so we do have a, an exchange, um, a returning exchange student on our call today that we'll hear from as well. So if you want to think a little bit more long term and think about what the five years might look like, um, so that might include everything that I've just described, um, but also gives you the capability of pursuing our internship program. So our internship program has students um, going out into the workforce um, for 12 to 16 months. So it does extend your degree by one year, um, but these are paid internships. Uh, we have our uh, career manager, Cynthia Bishop, um, presenting at 11 o'clock to talk about the different services from our career team, uh, which does include our internship. And I'll speak a little bit about it later in the presentation. And again, we do have a student that's with us um, to talk about their internship experience as well, or to touch on it rather. So that's within five years. Um, so when we're in person, uh, this is where I usually see parents get a little bit nervous because there's still a little bit of space on the slides. Um, but what might six years look like? So six years, because students have done their four-year undergrad uh, commerce degree, and if they have done the internship and have that one-year work experience, they have the opportunity to complete an accelerated MBA in just eight months. Um, so there is very strong alignment on McMaster between our undergrad and our MBA program. Um, but I do know that um, commerce students from our program have gone to other graduate schools and done their MBA and had advanced standing based on their commerce work. Um, so that's a great opportunity. And I'll highlight the word opportunity because none of this is required necessarily uh, for MBA, for internship, for exchange, for designations. And these are just opportunities that are available to students as they progress through their degree. Um, so. Uh, again, often after the presentation, I'm asked, how do I sign up for the MBA stream? Um, so there's not an MBA stream. So again, as you go through your degree, um, it's, you have the opportunity to engage and to think about what you want to do with that degree and afterwards, and if you want to engage in some of these different opportunities. But I'd like you to imagine, um, you know, going into your first job interview um, and being able to talk about how you did your degree at McMaster um, with a minor in French, and you lived overseas in France for one or two terms and came back and did our internship and worked at um, one of the banks in Toronto, uh, came back and completed your degree and then went on to do your des um, to do your MBA and complete your coursework towards one of uh, prof our professional designations uh, and all of that um, before your 23rd birthday. So I think that'd be a very compelling interview. So those are, all, again, opportunities. And um, again, we have people on our uh, presentation today to talk about some of these different aspects. Um, but one thing to highlight is that uh, you do not necessarily have to choose between all these different options. And I think what makes McMaster and Degroot unique is that you have the capability of doing all of these things. So you're not being made to change, uh, to decide between a designation and exchange or an exchange and an internship. Uh, you have the capability of doing all of those things. So I'd like to introduce to you our Associate Dean, Dr. Sue McCracken, um, who will talk to us about uh, some, of, some very exciting uh, developments um, for the future of business. So please welcome Sue. Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to see so many people here with us today. I know this is a a little bit of an overwhelming time for all of you, you know, making these big decisions. It's an exciting time. And uh, we're so thrilled that you're here with us and we can talk to you about how great McMaster and uh, DeGroote is. I am going to say I am a little bit biased that I think DeGroote is great, but um, you'll learn about that today. And I really encourage you to stay with us throughout the day, learn more about DeGroote, learn more about McMaster and really talk to our students. I always say they are the ones that really know the information. We can tell you what we know, but if you really want to know Know what really is going on. I'm saying a lot of reallys because they are the ones that really, really know. Um, they've got the scoop and uh, they can answer your questions. So I encourage you to do that. And they are the biggest ambassadors of our program as well. So I am Sue McCracken. I'm the Associate Dean Academic. I'm also a professor in accounting. 
Um, I have been the Associate Dean Academic coming up now on four years. Before that, I was the director of the MBA program. Um, and uh, so when I took on the role of uh, being the Associate Dean Academic, moved back to the main campus, um, which was really exciting. I love our campus. If you haven't had an opportunity, um, I know we're in lockdown, but uh, when we come out, you know, go and walk around the campus and get a feel for it or do our virtual tours as well. Um, we've got some virtual tours that McMaster has put together and we've put together as well that you can see our beautiful campus. So take the opportunity to, to find out uh, how great McMaster is. So when I came back to main campus um, and took on this role of overseeing the undergraduate business programs, I was like, what can we do to make this program better? We have a great program, but how do we improve it? And so I talked to a lot of people. Um, I talked to our current students, they can tell you that. I talked to them. I talked to our young alumni because the people that have just gone out to work. I talked to our employers. I talked to our faculty. I talked to our staff. I looked at what was happening in other schools. And what is it that we needed to ensure that our students were set apart, that they stood out over other students? And I can tell you what we learned was the content we were delivering really great, as every other school does. I'll say that. You know, accounting is accounting. There's only so many ways you can teach accounting. I'll, I'll, I'll make fun of accounting because that's what I teach. Um, but what else could we be doing? And they really talked about those essential skills, communication, resilience, agility, um, presentation skills. All of these things are really important. And that's what an effective business leader needs. And that's what employers are looking for. That's what our young alumni were telling us. That's what our current students were telling us was needed. So we looked at the program and we really tried to build the development of those essential skills in. And uh, we've had really good success with it so far. And so I can tell you, we've got a new program that we call, it's called the GROW program. And I was very fortunate. I got to teach that program um, the, the first year to the first year students this past, uh, this past year. And it was such a rewarding experience. Um, we were online, but it went really well. We interacted well with the students. We had great ways to engage the students and we had really good feedback as to how our programming went. And we did develop those skills. We put students on the spot. And it wasn't scary. We did it in small groups. I had 30 amazing TAs that worked with uh, groups of about 30 students. And they, you know, made the students feel comfortable. We started developing those key skills. And so communication skills, both writing and, you know, verbal um, skills improved. Um, we learned about how to use PowerPoint. We learned how to use Excel and uh, really was exciting. So these, these grow courses, we're going to be using those to develop those skills through all four years of the program. So we do the first year. I have to highlight as well, in our first year, we do what's called the 24 hour case. And we, and we don't do it till January. We give you the fall um, to get yourself uh, organized, you know, get comfortable in university. And then in January, we do a 24 hour case where we have our students actually tackle a, a, a case and present it to judges. And it's a little daunting, it's a little scary, but I can tell you that our students really enjoy it. And they feel like they've, you know, they're finally a business student and they've actually applied their learnings. And we have judges come from employers, from alumni, from our business partners. And and I, I know if you join us, you will impress them as well, but they always come back and say how impressed they are with our students and what our first year students are able to, to accomplish in those 24 hours. And every year we've had some of the judges come back to us and say they want to hire our students. So, so that's always a huge positive for us. And it's a great way to start applying that learning. We really believe that's important here at DeGroote to start applying what you're learning. Don't just study it. Get out there and, uh, and, and apply the, the content, apply the skills. And uh, as I said, that's what we learned. And that's what we were told. That's how we can set our students apart because we wanna make sure that we are developing really successful, effective business leaders. I, I also want to talk a little bit, I don't want to take too much, we have a great uh, program for you today, but I want to talk to you a little bit about what is behind me on my screen. You can see um, I've got a background filter and it is our new building. And we're really excited about this new building. Um, it's going to be, kind of be called the McLean Center for Collaborative Discovery. And you as students will actually get to experience it. It's going to start being built this summer. It'll take two years to be built. And uh, so we will be able to be in that building in September, 2023. So by you joining us in 2021, you will be able to experience the building. Unfortunately, our students that are here now and graduating will not have that experience, but they're gonna come back and hire our, all of our students. So they'll be able to engage in the building that way. 
The goal of the building is really to facilitate all this applied learning that we're talking about. It's built for students. Um, it is focused on student learning, that application-based learning, and uh, it, it's going to be fabulous. I'm really excited about it, but we still are in the stages of developing and determining what actually is going inside the building. Um, they're going to start building the outside. You know, It takes a while to build a building of this size, and so you'll find if you join us that we will be going out to students and asking for their input as to what is um, required um, for the student success, for student learning. So very excited about that. And, and believe me, if you join us, you get an email from, from me or from student experience saying, can we get your input? Um, I have run lots of focus groups and things like that. We do want to hear from you. And again, talk to the students. You'll hear from them that a lot of their ideas actually do filter through into what is happening in the program and what will be happening in the building. I just want to highlight one last thing before I turn it over because I know there's a lot of other great speakers here for you to talk a little bit about what our year this year looked like and the online the online component. We are working to be as in person as possible um, in the fall, um, but you know, given the current situation, public health, all of that, you may not have everything in person, but we're going to have as many classes, as many um, club activities, as many things as we can um, in person. We really did effective online learning this year. Our students have told us we did synchronous learning. Um, we had students come together as I talked about my GROW course, interacting with one another, and they really felt like they belonged to Groot. That is what DeGroote is about, making you feel like you're part of the family and we support one another. And uh, I believe we did that very effectively this year. We do have some videos um, that are on the website that you can go to. And our first year instructors are there talking about how they adapted and how they really made it, you know, students feel like they were part of DeGroot and that they belonged and um, all of that. So I encourage you to watch those videos as well and talk to students about it. But I am working very hard. I wanna be on campus. I wanna see you, I wanna meet you. And uh, I look forward to you choosing DeGroot. So that's it for me, Greg, I'm done. I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you so much, Sue. <clears throat> okay, and uh, as you mentioned, we, we do have a lot of content that's going to be available on the Gather Town platform, and uh, we'll make it available afterwards as well. But uh, those videos that Sue just mentioned, uh, those will be in Gather Town, um, as well as we have some great videos of some of the students that you'll be hearing from um, later in this presentation as well. Yeah, so I just wanted to describe the, the structure of the program. I, um, a lot of people are quite curious uh, sort of when they do have to make those decisions for their upper year sort of specializations. Um, and when I, students tell me why they selected DeGroot um, in the past, one of the top reasons that I heard was that they really enjoyed being exposed to all the different areas of business before having to decide you know, how they wanted to really focus and use their electives in pursuit of a designation or a particular field. Um, so as I mentioned, in the first two years, um, you can see that your courses um, within commerce, you're getting exposure in, uh, to accounting and to data analytics and organizational behavior and marketing, economics, um, calculus, all in your first year. Um, so most of these courses are, are taken together as, as a, within business, so a great deal of business courses. Um, the math and the economics courses are, are, you'll see, you'll be in classes with students from all across the university as well. Um, so it's really a great opportunity to meet people from other programs um, and we really encourage students to really think in that interdisciplinary manner. Um, so that's a great opportunity for you there. Um, as you mentioned, a lot of our program development has been in really strong consultation with our student um, leadership, as well as broader focus groups and working with alumni and employer partners. Um, and I can tell you that the program has evolved very significantly over the past several years and uh, will continue to evolve based on the feedback that we get. Um, but I can tell you that when I started with the school, uh, we only had one business course in first year and uh, students didn't like that. Um, so we've continued to, uh, to look at how we can offer courses and introduce students uh, to the topics, but also to that group community. And uh, we're super excited for this building that's going to be coming online in a couple of years to be able to offer all these courses uh, in our classrooms even. So we're really excited about that. Um, so you will see that you still have electives in your first year. Um, um, those electives will come outside of the program. Uh, your commerce electives begin in your third year, um, which we'll, we'll come to in a moment. 
Um, but again, very similar to uh, first year, you'll see um, lots of required commerce courses. Um, so this really helps build out your overall comprehensive understanding of business from lots of different uh, aspects and perspectives. Uh, and this is very important because we want to be able to create uh, business leaders. And it's very important for you to be able to understand all the different elements of business. Because even if you decided that you want to go into marketing, uh, there's still leading teams in, market and, uh, in marketing organizations and uh, hiring and firing and creating marketing budgets and all those different uh, systems that you have to learn. Uh, so it's very important for you to be able to move and to become an effective leader that you do have those technical um, capabilities as well. Um, and just a heads up for parents, you can see that your uh, children will be taking negotiations in level two. Uh, so you might want to uh, sort of learn alongside them. Otherwise, I don't know that you'll be able to uh, pick any restaurants going forward. Um, but again, in second year, um, similarly, you do have electives. And again, those will be outside of the program. Uh, we want students to really augment um, and explore uh, different aspect, um, areas of the university. Um, outside of business. Uh, and one way we facilitate that is something called our personal interest courses. Uh, and this gives students the opportunity to take courses outside of business on a pass fail basis. Um, so if you might be interested in computer science, but a little bit concerned about how that might impact your GPA or keeping up, uh, you can elect to take those courses on a pass fail basis. Um, so you can do that for up to 12 units um, across your upper years. Um, and then finally, um, I just wanted to highlight in, in third and fourth year, uh, you can see I, I've grouped them together. Um, just so you can see that there is a very few required courses and very many electives available to you. Um, so you have commerce electives that you'll take, non-commerce electives, and then open electives can be either or. Uh, we wanted to give you the openness um, to be able to, again, pursue specific interests, um, but all inside and outside of the faculty. So again, if you're choosing to do a minor, um, you may be using those open electives towards upper year history classes or computer science classes. Um, and then just with regards to the nature of the upper year courses, um, so after the level one and two, um, our level one and two courses are quite uh, large and very lecture based um, in the classroom. And then we use tutorials to really explore and dig into aspects. Uh, but in the upper years, the average class size is 40 to 45 students. Um, and these are very heavily case-based courses and experientially based. Um, so a course like 3MC3, your applied marketing management is applied marketing management, uh, where we're working with um, local businesses um, to understand their business problems and bringing that learning into the classroom. Um, this is how one of the opportunities, or sort of one of the ways that we stay in touch with what's happening in, biz in business. Um, so it's not... Uh, taking what's happening in uh, just in the textbook, we're actually taking that learning out into the world and bringing that learning from the world back into the classroom. Um, and then the other aspect for the upper year courses is that they get more integrative. So again, in level two accounting, you're typically studying accounting, uh, but when you get into management skills and business policy, um, that's where you're really pulling from all those different areas um, and of, of business that you've learned in your first two years. So again, I expect there's lots of questions and I, I, I almost paused for questions there, but I think I'll be addressing those at the end of the presentation. Um, so I'd like to introduce Lauren Murphy. Um, so she is one of our um, esteemed business students and she has been elected to our DeGroote Commerce Society as the president uh, for the coming year. Um, so she will be a great resource for you and um, will also be really working to enhance your experience. So please welcome Lauren. Thanks, Greg. So hi, everyone. Um, I, start, I wanted to start out by thanking you all for coming to learn more about McMaster and DeGroote and to the faculty for giving me the opportunity to speak today. So my name is Lauren Murphy and I'm going into my fourth year at DeGroote with a focus in human resources and a minor in French. Uh, so I'm hoping to go into training and development in the future, but this upcoming year, I will be the president of the DeGroote Commerce Society, uh, also known as the DCS around campus. Uh, so we are the organization that oversees all of the extracurricular activities at the school and we partner with faculty to advocate for students here at DeGroote. So we're kind of like your high school student council, but for all commerce and integrated business and humanity students, we represent over 20 clubs and committees and connect the dots between academics, faculty, and your future. Uh, so when I was looking at university 
I guess three years ago, um, the landscape was a little bit different, but I can 100% remember how you all may be feeling. It's a really nerve wracking, scary and exciting experience all wrapped into one. And ultimately you wanna make the decision that's right for yourself and where you'll be the most happy for the next four or five years. So when I applied to university, I only had a few requirements. I knew I wanted to go to school for business. I wanted to attend somewhere that had opportunities for success and a strong alumni network. And coming from Toronto, I wanted to be a member of a vibrant and diverse community. So McMaster and the DeGroote School of Business certainly fit these requirements with over 130 years of history, a high global ranking, and a student population that has nearly 48% of students identifying as being part of a racialized community, 23% of students identifying as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, and 40% of students being the first in their family to attend university. DeGroote also has approximately 30% of students coming to Canada as international students, so definitely a diverse and vibrant community. But there was also one thing that I learned that I should have been looking for that I didn't even think of at the time, and that was to be a part of a supportive and growing community. So I'd always heard that business school was really cutthroat and you had to be independent and learn for yourself. However, at DeGroote, there is a really amazing community that actually supports you and provides you with help if you need it. If you ask a faculty member, staff, or a friend for help, you actually get it. And I didn't know this was something that I should have been looking for, but I can't imagine what my university career would have been like without this amazing group of people. So if I'm being honest, I was not very involved in high school and I didn't expect to be involved in university either, but now I'm the president of a very large organization here. And this is because I learned that there were so many more opportunities at McMaster that I didn't have in high school. So the McMaster Students Union has over 300 clubs that all students can be involved with. And I guarantee if you looked at the club's directory, there would definitely be something that interests you. Uh, there are so many groups and opportunities to be a part of. So for me, I attended Welcome Week in my first year, joined a few clubs, found a mentor, and eventually found a passion in student involvement. And the community here at DeGroote and McMaster really helped me feel welcome, supportive, and as though I made the right choice. Uh, when I applied to be a part of the DCS two years ago, I wasn't sure what to expect. And I learned that there were so many students here that actually care about each other and want to help each other succeed. So I wanted to build upon this amazing foundation to ensure that DeGroote is as engaged, inclusive, and happy as possible this next year. So I'm sure that your grade 12 year was not what you expected and the DCS is working tirelessly to ensure that students have a great experience this year, regardless of the environment. So to allow incoming students to be a part of this community, we are focusing on ensuring that events are as accessible and interesting as possible. We're also making significant efforts to ensure that students are taking care of their wellness through the DCS Mental Health Fund. So this aims to provide students with individualized mental health support and opportunities to learn new techniques to overcome challenges. Um, we're also focusing on ensuring that McMaster's diverse and inclusive community is considered in all aspects of our operations. Uh, so this is done through community consultation and our new vice president of advocacy role. Uh, so planning is still ongoing, obviously, as we learn more about the school year, but we will be offering roles and opportunities to first year students through our year representative roles, event planning opportunities, and of course, listening to your needs and wants throughout your career. So if you're interested in getting your voice heard through upcoming surveys and focus groups, or if you just wanna be informed of events at DeGroot, you can follow us on Instagram at DCS at Mac to stay in the loop. And I know that was probably a lot of information and I'm sure you'll hear so much more today, but if I could summarize everything, I would like to say that McMaster and DeGroot is such a unique school in that we have this amazing support system. People will help you find your way and support you as you create your path. And I personally don't think I could have accomplished what I've done so far anywhere else. So thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, uh, myself and some members of my team are going to be at the club fair portion of the May at Mac event. So I hope to see many of you at the end of August as well for Welcome Week. Best of luck, everyone. Great, thank you so much, Lauren. Um, so yeah, I've asked each of those students to give a little bit of their background, just so you can see the different paths that people have chosen um, from amongst the different sort of opportunities um, that we've spoken about already. Um, so I'll now turn it over um, to Ishan, who's going to be talking about um, sort of what's to start. Um, so we'll have actually a few students here. So I'll have Ishan, uh, Momina, and Kaylee to talk about their experiences. 
um, through Welcome Week and supporting with Welcome Week, as well as exchange, internship, student supports. Um, so thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. So uh, as Greg mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about student life and in particular our experiences. So as an introduction, my name is Ishan Koshal. I've just wrapped up my third year here in the Commerce program, and I'm pretty excited to get into this and talk to you through my experience. So if I take you back all the way back when I was in high school, I was a pretty involved student. I was doing student council. I was doing yearbook. I was at all the sporting events, doing all those things. So when I came to university, I knew I wanted to be involved. I knew that was something that I wanted to do, but I honestly didn't really know what that looked like. I know Mac had over 300 clubs, but I wasn't sure where I wanted to fit in or where I wanted to be involved. It wasn't actually until Welcome Week that I found out about all of the vast opportunities and experiences to get involved in, where I then chose to sign up for a couple of things and really dive into the community a little bit deeper. You may be wondering, what is Welcome Week, though? And Welcome Week is essentially this big week where all of the campus, whether virtual or in person, really comes to life. And you hear about all of the opportunities that there are to experience at McMaster. It's a time to meet people and really get acquainted with the culture at Mac. If you'll hear from Amina later on, and if you want to connect with her after, she is a great resource for this incoming year about the entire Welcome Week team. During that week, I also found out about the first year orientation program, the FYOP program. It's our mentorship program where I, where you essentially are matched with an upper year mentor. So I didn't really know uh, what that was about, but I signed up during the week and I, I just went through it. A couple of weeks later, I was doing my first midterm and I actually didn't do so well. I got a 47 on it, a little embarrassed to say, but that was my first midterm. And I was scared. I was like, uh oh, this isn't what I was expecting. What is this? And I remember that moment that, oh, I have an upper year mentor. And I was like, OK, maybe I'll go reach out to them. So I read, reached out to this student. Uh, and just on the last slide, Greg, actually, it's the student in the top corner with the hand hearts in this photo. So you'll see here that uh, this is Hannah. And it was really Hannah who actually was my mentor and helped me bridge that gap between high school and university learning. So I'd highly recommend getting a mentor if you come to DeGroote and when you're here. So on the next slide, you've already heard from Lauren who talked about the university experience with the DCS and what that looks like, but I'm gonna walk you through some opportunities that you could potentially get involved with. For me, I knew I was an artistic person, but I was also looking to build skills and, and do some other things. So the first thing I actually got involved with was case competitions with the JDCC incubator program. This is a program that essentially takes you from the ground up for case competitions and presenting skills. You learn how to build a case, do an analysis, and that was a really great learning that I was actually able to bring back into the classroom later on in my degree. The second thing I got to do was take on a leadership opportunity, a position I hadn't been in before where I was actually leading a massive group of team. The program I took on uh, to be a part of was the first year orientation program, so that mentorship program that I spoke about. So I was actually on that team to help lead it, and that was really unique uh, and something to uh, network and organize and do something fun. The third thing is being on internal opportunities. So Lauren mentioned there are over, I think it's there's over like 13 clubs and committees across the Degree Commerce Society itself. And on all of them, whether it's a finance association, marketing or HR, whatever it may be, there are these little teams that you can be a part of and help contribute to make their year special and really contribute to it. So the bottom line from this is really there are tons of different types of opportunities. So whether it's a presenting opportunity or something for you to learn and build skills yourself, there are definitely things that you can build and find. And if there isn't an opportunity for you, you can take that leadership opportunity to build it for yourself. And that is totally welcome here at DeGroote. So really on the last slide here, I'm just, my big takeaway is get involved. So as you can see, there are tons of things to do and tons of places to go. DeGroote is very community oriented and getting involved in university is so important, whether it's to make friends, have people to do your assignments with, or honestly just give you a break from school. Getting involved is very important. I'm now gonna pass it over to Kaylee, who's gonna to continue to talk about her experiences here. Thank you, Ishan. So hello, everyone. I'll just quickly introduce myself. My name is Kaylee Oliver, and I'm a part of the graduating class for this year in 2021. So I obviously did a Bachelor of Commerce, and I coupled that with a double minor in Geography and Globalization. I also did the exchange program last year uh, before I got sent home because of COVID. And across my four years, I've done a lot of extracurriculars, whether it's conferences, leadership opportunities, clubs. Um, but the only reason why I was able to make all of this happen is because of the supports that were available around the, the campus. So we've heard from Lauren and we've heard from Ishan and you'll hear from Omina later about all of these great things you can get involved with. 
but along the way you may need a helping hand so i'm here to take you through those helping hands that are here so I know I have student experience office listed off as the first thing, but I'm gonna come back to that at the end because that's the really important one. So we're just gonna start off first with student accessibility services. So if you are someone who is in an Ontario high school now and maybe has an IEP, this is the place you're looking for, or if you're anybody who needs certain learning accommodations so that you can fully succeed in your academics, Student Accessibility Services, or SAS as we call it, um, is the place that you're looking for. And they're here to provide academic accommodations to really anyone who needs it, but specifically uh, to those students who may have disabilities. So just to give you a little personal experience for two of my four years, so half of my university program, I have unfortunately had concussions during the school year, which makes my learning a little bit more complex compared to some other students. And so with SAS, I was able to get a more individualized academic uh, performance program and I was able to have more uh, in-depth connections with my professors and really have them help me along the way throughout my degree to make sure that this physical disability didn't get in the way of my learning and in the way of my education. So if you're looking for uh, a way to make sure that you succeed in the best way possible and succeed in a way that works for you, Student Accessibility Services is the place that you're looking for, so be sure to get in touch with them if you have any concerns. The next one I'm going to move on to is the Student Success Center or the SSC. Something you'll learn about McMaster is we do everything in acronyms. All of the building names are in acronyms. Pretty much all of the clubs are in acronyms as well. So get used to hearing that around town. Uh, but the Student Success Center is a great place for peer supports if you would prefer to meet with people your own age or people in your program rather than perhaps a professional for a certain situation. So there's tutoring opportunities available with peers. There's also a really great uh, writing help service that I recommend to any international students who may not have English as their first language. If you're looking to really keep up with all of your writing skills and essays and papers and everything, writing support is there, not just for international students, but for anyone else. And another great uh, option that the Student Success Center offers is just a wide variety of skill development workshops. So if you're looking for quick drop-in events or sign-up events, this is the place that you want to look for, and this is McMaster-wide, so you'll be able to uh, meet a great deal of people. The next one we're going to look at is the Math Help Center. So if we're being completely honest, math has never been my strong suit, not in high school, not in university. So when I found out about the Ma Math Help Center, I knew I needed to be a part of it. Uh, so basically, if you make it back on campus anytime soon, the Math Help Center is located in Hamilton Hall, and it essentially is just a massive group of upper year students, maybe masters, maybe PhD, who are there to provide tutoring and help services to anyone who is in a math course in first year. So there are specific tutors there for literally every single first year math course. And if you remember from what Greg said earlier, there is a required calculus class. So you may want to access the services there if you're like me and you struggle a little bit with all of the graphs and everything. Moving on, we next have the Student Wellness Center. And I'm going to preface this by saying, I know this year has been very, very tough for everyone with online learning, and it likely might not get better anytime soon. So when you come to university, make sure that you always, always, always put your mental and physical health first. That is not, does not come short of anything else. If you don't have a good mental and physical health, your academics aren't really going to matter at all. So make sure you always put yourself first. And if you're looking for help, please go to the Student Wellness Center. They have counseling programs, health promotion programs, active living programs, anything you might need, whether it's peer or professional help, the Student Wellness Center, when it comes to that, is where you want to go. So I said I was gonna circle back to the Student Experience Office, which I will do now. And I really owe a large portion of my degree to the people in this office because they have walked me through absolutely every problem I have encountered over my four years. And the Student Experience Office is really your one-stop shop for literally anything business, whether that's your classes, whether that's exchange, whether that's internship or anything career and professional development. This is where you want to go, and these are the people that you want to talk to. Um, so like I said before, I was very involved throughout my four years, but sometimes 
time is a constraint and time is a problem when you're dealing with a lot of extracurriculars as well as your classes. So for example, a service that you can utilize in the student experience office is just some help when it comes to coordinating all of your commitments. Sometimes I would be at a conference when I had a midterm scheduled. And so the people in the student experience office were able to help me move the, that midterm date around, talk with my professors, make sure that I could always do both. I could always do my classes and always do my extracurriculars because they are just as important, even though they may not be worth any credit. Um, the last thing I want to talk about for the Student Experience Office is what is known as the DEF or the DeGroote Experience Fund. So I've talked a lot about uh, maybe face-to-face -face services uh, just now, but the DEF is actually a monetary resource that is available to you. So if you're looking to pursue business avenues outside of McMaster, the DEF uh, is your place for that. And so in my second year, along with Momina, who you'll meet in just a second, um, we were able to travel to Winnipeg, Manitoba for the National Business School Conference. And so obviously, though, flights cost money, conferences cost money. And so I was able to access the Degroot Experience Fund to help pay for part of this trip. And the only thing I had to do in return was to submit a statement of interest or a letter of intent, whatever you want to call it, uh, really verbalizing how this experience was going to better me as a person, better me as a business student, and better me as a peer and all of these things, because experiential learning is quite literally one of the most important things you will do within your business degree, because it really puts what you learn into practice. So overall, all of these five services that I've listed are going to be readily available to you, whether what format it is when we get to the fall, whether it's online, in person, or somewhere in between. So please, please, please make sure that you access them if you need to, because everyone at the DeGroote School of Business is here for your journey and is here to help you get through that journey. So don't be afraid to ask. I'm now going to pass it on to Momina, who's going to talk a little bit more about her experience at DeGroote. Awesome. Thanks, Kaylee. So hi, everybody. My name is Momina. I'm just wrapping up my fourth slash internship year. And similar to Kaylee and Ishan, I've had my fair share of being involved at DeGroote. One of the ways that I've made the most out of my degree is through experiential learning. And that's a term that, you, that you've heard quite a lot during this presentation. Experiential learning is essentially taking what you're learning in the classroom and applying it outside of the classroom. Opportunities like cases and conferences have been an incredible way for me to hone in on these things that I learned in my day-to-day -day classes and gain that exposure into the real world. Similar to Ishan, I've also participated in the JDCC program, but on the national case competition side of it. And I saw that there was a question in the chat that somebody said that they were interested in entrepreneurship. I was actually an entrepreneurship delegate and I spent an entire semester working on cases. And then I got to present my final case in January. And being virtual this past year, did not put a pause on that experiential learning opportunities like these. In fact, our JDCC team last year actually ended up bringing home a first place national win. And similar to Kaylee, I've also attended a bunch of conferences and used the DEF or the Degroot Experience Fund to travel to BC, Winnipeg, and Windsor. Speaking of travel, if we switch on over to the next slide, you'll see that another experiential learning that I got to explore was an exchange semester in Germany. As you can tell by the pictures on the slide, it was an incredible once in a lifetime experience, probably one of the highlights of my DeGroote experience thus far. You'll also see Kaylee in some of the pictures as well. And it was just wonderful to visit DeGroote friends in different places around Europe, as well as with people that I and friends that I met on exchange. However, there were some challenges and considerations before I decided to go. The first one was financial constraints, if I was going to be able to afford it, if that is a feasible budgetary thing for me to do. And the answer was yes. There are a lot of specific scholarships available for those participating in the exchange program, which I utilized. And I met with advisors constantly to guide me through the right places. The biggest bonus is that you pay uh, tuition directly to McMaster. So there's no international student fees that apply. The second one is that I also wanted to participate in that 12 month CIP internship program, but I wasn't too sure if I was going to be able to. And so our career and professional development team really ensured me that both are possible. And in fact, helped me tailor my resume and my cover letter um, 
uh, to make me stand out as that prospective candidate when I was applying for internships. They also helped me while I was abroad with Skype interview prep, which at the time was such a foreign concept, um, not, not as much of it as it is now. Um, and last but certainly not least, convincing my parents to let me live on the other side of the globe. But after you know speaking to them about the resources and the supports that are available uh, to walk you through that process, and then the value at the end of the day, they were 100% supportive and on board. Uh, once I got to Germany, I was still connected with the student experience team like Kaylee spoke about, so the academic advisors, to really ensure that my courses were going well and that I was adjusting well to the culture in Germany. And of course, when COVID started to hit in 2020, uh, they really supported me through that process, making sure that you know even if I had to return home safely, um, I was still able to get my credits. Being abroad really allowed me to learn uh, and hone in on a lot of key skills, adaptability, perseverance, resilience, just to name a few. But I'm really grateful for these life learned skills and I've been applying them into my day to day ever since my return home. I'm also looking forward to applying these skills in our required final year business class called International Business next year. So that'll be really exciting. And if we switch on over to the next slide and you'll see that like I alluded to earlier, thanks to the resources and opportunities available, I was able to experience both both an exchange and internship, another great experiential learning opportunity here at DeGroote. I'm currently a marketing intern at Dyson Canada. So Dyson, that really snazzy vacuum company that maybe your parents might know of if you don't. Um, and I've been working completely 100% virtually over this past year. I won't speak too, too much on internship because there is a presentation happening right after this, which I encourage you to check out. But if there is one thing that I can say is that being on that 12 month internship has really allowed me to tie in all of the different pieces that I've taken um, at my degree experience thus far and bring them into the real world and developing that toolkit of skills has been extremely valuable and rewarding. I'm excited to come back into my, <clears throat> my fifth and final year with this newfound understanding and appreciation of the business world. Um, if we switch on over to the next slide again, you'll see that uh, your journey here at DeGroote really starts with that incredible first year and welcome week experience, something which I'm actually leading through my role as the first year experience coordinator for DeGroote. So I'll be in touch with you over the summer and of course throughout your, your welcome week. So if you have any questions about that, um, well, you can find me at the welcome week green suits booth on Gather Town today. Um, and if there is one key takeaway from all of us, me, Kaylee and Ishan, it's that, that at DeGroote, you customize your degree to best fit you. Ishan, Kaylee, and I are just examples of the various paths that you can take here. Everybody has their own unique journey, and there's a lot of resources and supports to help guide you through your time and beyond in the DeGroote community. Um, on the last slide here are our contact details. If you do want to scan, take a screenshot, we'll be more than happy to help you navigate through any questions you have. No question is a dumb question. We are all here to help you succeed. Uh, thank you so much on behalf of me, Ishan and Kaylee, and I will pass it back over to Greg. Okay, thank you, Momina. Uh, every, when, I, when I hear these stories, I get excited. Um, again, I wish I was going back to school. Um, I know we just have a few minutes left and I wanna take some questions. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate something that um, Kaylee had talked about, just to share that you know, I do hear concerns from students and parents that transitioning to university, um, you know, they might have had special um, sort of accommodations in high school or concerns about moving to a new city or a new country. Um, so I want to assure you that we do have a great deal of individualized consideration and care available. Um, so Kaylee did highlight some of these different offices on campus, um, but just to reassure that uh, we do really work with you as an individual. Um, and again, to make sure they're able to fully participate and to be successful um, in your studies. Um, and again, just looking at that student accessibility services, that might mean that if you're on a particular taking a medication that makes you drowsy in the evenings and that's not the best time for you to write midterms, we would work with you and with student accessibility services to move the timing for your midterm. Um, so that's just one example. Um, but again, just to assure you, there is a lot of individualized attention and care um so i'll leave this contact um again we're available throughout the day um so to answer questions uh i wish we were here on campus together uh, this is one of my favorite pictures of campus and campus continues to evolve there's going to be a new business building soon uh if you have the opportunity over the next several months please visit campus uh that uh, really is one of our, our selling features uh what's wonderful about mcmaster is it's a wonderful medium-sized school um, that is small enough to have that community, but big enough to have all the opportunities that you would get anywhere else. Um, so I'll close with that, and then uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. 
We have we have lots of questions, which is great. Uh, we'll go over some of them now. If we don't have time now, they'll come into GatherTown or go to our Zoom help room, and we'll be able to answer any specific questions you have. But we're getting a lot of questions about math. Uh, one of the questions is, if I what math am I taking in first year? What if I've taken math in grade 12? So to enter the program, you have to have advanced functions and calculus and vectors. And in your first year, you would take a, a level one math course. You don't have to take math later unless you want to, but you do have to take one calculus class in first year. Uh, don't worry if you feel uncomfortable with it. A lot of students do not like math, that's okay. But like Kelly said, there's a lot of supports available. So. If you come into Gather Town, probably if you ask about half of our students how they feel about math, they'll probably tell you they either use math support, they use tutors, or they can give you some suggestions. And if you sign up for FYO, like Ishan mentioned, your mentor will probably be able to give you some helpful tips on getting through math. But it's just one math course. You don't have to take it later on if you don't want to. Um, another question we've gotten quite a bit is about getting involved on campus. So maybe one of our students can answer this. Is it, are you able to still get involved in clubs and get involved on campus and meet people if you're not living on campus? Yeah, I can take that one. I commuted in my first year. Uh, so I took the go bus into campus and getting and in, being involved is 100% possible when you are commuting or when you are living off campus and you're not, you know, in residence per se. Um, so yeah, it's definitely possible. You just got to reach out to the right people. Again, all the upper year students will definitely guide you into those right places and help you find whatever it is that you're interested for. So, you know, just ask away and we'll help you out. Perfect. And We've mentioned GatherTown quite a few times. You're going to get a demo in a little bit. You'll be able to talk to a lot of our students. A lot of them haven't lived on campus, and a lot of them are still involved. A lot of them have also just been in our virtual environment for the last year, but they're involved in clubs. They're involved in our ambassador program. So definitely when you hop on later on, you're going to find out a lot more. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions about um, the co-op program or internship, so you're going to hear more shortly from our manager of career and professional development. But one question that we've had a few times is about minors. So can a minor be from any faculty at DeGroot? Uh, so right? Sure, sure. Any faculty but DeGroot. Um, so because you're studying business, that's sort of your major. Um, so where we're, for minors, uh, you have the capability of minoring outside of the faculty. Uh, we do have an interdisciplinary minor with it, uh, engineering. Um, so that's the closest thing. Uh, but it's the minor in innovation. Um, but typically our students are minoring in uh, sustainability, economics, uh, community engagement, uh, mathematics. Um, those minors are all available and you can see them in the academic calendar. But there's an enormous amount of uh, certificates and minors available across McMaster. Perfect. And we have a question, Greg, this one's probably for you as well. Um, how long do the designations normally take? Are they an exam or an entire course? Um, so there's a number of courses. So I did my CPA designation. Um, so you can do, I'd say, 80-85% of your coursework uh, with DeGroot. Uh, we have a follow-on graduate diploma in accountancy. Um, so when you're done those two programs, uh, that grad diploma in accountancy is uh, three months, uh, so May, June, and July. Uh, and that takes you right into the capstone modules with CPA. And then there's some exams with CPA and some work experience required. That's five years from now, so we can have time to talk about that in between. Uh, with CFA, um, it's really when you're prepared to write the test. So the coursework that we cover uh, will help prepare you. So there's three levels to the CFA. Um, so you're encouraged to take specific courses and cover specific content before you um, write those exams. Perfect. And we have a question about exchange. Um, for the exchange program, are we learning from, an, from another school in a different country or is it doing an internship in another country? So you would be learning for a semester or two semesters in another country. And there'll be students in Gather Town as well that can talk to you about their experiences. So if you come on at 11.30, they can let you know what it was like. Um, we have a question about how do you find and register? Well, and oh, go ahead. Just let, me, just let me go back for a second because I just, this is one thing I usually talk about when we talk about exchange, but I did want to highlight that we have partnerships. So McMaster has a great deal of partnerships with institutions around the world. Uh, and then the group has specific business school to business school um, agreements with schools across the world. And many of them are some of the top rated business schools in the world. Um, so it's a great opportunity for you to expand your network while living abroad, while getting a different perspective. Um, but where you might be studying in Japan or Singapore, um, Denmark, uh, you're studying in English, uh, which, is, which is a great opportunity. So lots of selection. And again, you don't have to necessarily speak that language uh, that's native to the country. We have a question about, we have a few questions about case competitions. So how do you get involved in case competitions? How do you register? Um, it depends. So for the 24-hour case, all of you are going to be doing the 24-hour case in January. 
for our different clubs, you'll be able to decide if you want to join. So if you come onto the club fair, we have some of our case competitions uh, clubs available. So you can talk to all of our clubs, see if they offer case competitions. JDCC is there. That's a case competition. I think some of our students here right now have also done quite a few case competitions. So you can look for them in Gathertown or look for any other students. And if you ask an ambassador about case competitions, they can bring you to someone that's done one. So you'll be able to get a good sense of what you can expect uh, once you get to gather town. Um, some questions, is exchange optional? It's optional. Uh, internship and exchange, yeah, we would never force you to do it. Highly encouraged, but optional. Yeah, <laughs> we, a lot of our business students do do it, but it's completely optional. We would definitely never make you go somewhere. You're <laughs> to go. <laughs> We're not going to send you somewhere else. You get to decide. Um, so there's some questions about how does the Integrated Business and Humanities program differ from commerce and some questions like that. We're gonna let our students answer that in Gathertown in a little bit. You'll be able to see if it's an IBH ambassador or a commerce ambassador. So talk to all of them and you'll be able to talk to students from both programs. You can see what the, the best program, what the right fit is for you. Um, are all of the supports like academic, uh, accessibility, wellness, are they free for all students? Yes, they are. We're not going to charge you for anything like that. Everything is included. So if you need career support, academic support, anything like that, it's all included for you. Um, we still have a lot of questions. We don't have time to get to all of them right now, but we will be able to answer them in Gathertown or in Zoom later on. Or you can also send me an email and I'll be able to link you to the right people. So if you aren't able to stay for the full day and you want to walk, talk to the students later, we can connect you with one of the students in the call or some other students. So I think that's, that's about it for our academic pre presentation. I am thank you, thankful to everyone that came out and talked today. All of everyone available today will be available through Gathertown or Zoom. So after our career presentation, if you hop on to Gathertown or onto Zoom, you can talk to all of these lovely people. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody.